Uh, once again, the solutions are here uh, for the common problem. And you'll notice that we reject this project that we already know objectively is a good project. And so that raises a couple of questions for us. One of the reasons why I chose a payback period of two years is because I knew that it would be enough for us to reject this project with the MPV rule has already told us is a good one. And this is one of the downsides. This project pays off in too long. It's still a good project, but it just takes too long relative to our arbitrary rule. And because there's no economic rationale between pick, behind picking this rule, there isn't any economic rationale behind picking a different number, say 2.5 or 3 or 4. None of that has any impact. And we could change our decision rule. We know this is a good project. We could change it to three years, but ultimately, we have to pick something and stick with it if we're going to use the payback rule. So now we evaluate it. And, and we know that this rule is, because it's so simple, is going to fail on a lot of these criteria. Does the payback rule account for the time value of money? And the answer is no. We don't use the present value of the cash flows. We use the future value, the actual value of the cash flows. Does it account for the risk of the cash flows? And the answer is no. We don't assign the risk of this project and we don't choose a required rate of return that has any meaningful impact on the model we use. Again, we're just using the future value of the cash flows. Does the payback rule provide an indication about the increase in value? And the answer is no, it doesn't tell us anything about how much value is created. All it does is tell us how quickly the cash flows cover the initial cost. So should it be our primary rule? The answer is no. But again, as I mentioned, this is still one of the most extensively used in practice. And it's because it does have a lot of benefits. It's easy to use, it's easy to understand, and it might be uh, valuable to us if we're evaluating projects where it's just simply not, re not reasonable to assign a team of analysts to, uh, to run some of these more complex decision-making rules, process rules. Now, economists, we're eager to improve upon the payback period rule because, of course, as I said, the payback period rule does have its own uses. And one of the ways that we thought we could improve on this rule was coming from the first, uh, the first issue, which is that it doesn't adjust for the risk or the time value of money. And that's mostly because to evaluate the payback period rule, we use the future value of cash flows. So one of the ways to get around that is to use the present value of cash flows instead. And so we've come, up, they, we've come up with a new rule called, not new, this is an old rule, but we've come up with an alternative to the payback period rule called the discounted payback period rule. And this mechanically is almost exactly the same as the payback period, except for we first compute the present value of each cash flow and then determine how long it takes to pay back on a discounted basis. So instead of being how long it takes for the positive cash flows to equal the negative cost, we ask how long does it take for the present value of the positive cash flows to equal the negative cost. Now the drawback that still, that still exists with the discounted payback is there does not, we do not create any new economic rationale for what the specific payback cutoff should be. So the dis discounted payback period suffers from the same drawback or one of the same drawbacks here as the payback rule, which is that I'm just going to pick a period and say, if this project doesn't pay back in less than two years, I won't take the project. Maybe I pick four years, maybe I pick six years. It doesn't matter because there isn't any reason to pick one or the other. Now, an established company that has used payback period or discounted payback period a lot will have come up with their own ad hoc rule system for what the cutoff should be, but ultimately that's just based on experience and it's not based on economics. So we still, we, we have solved some of the problems, but we still face one of the big ones, which is the cutoff rate is still arbitrary. But let's look at the project that we've looked at before and see how it plays out.